Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Howdy, sister. Hi, how's it going? It's going good. We're back. It's Let Love Podcast, and this is Sister on You Stay. And this is Sister Veritas, and we're so happy to be back with you looking at the Gospel of Life, Chapter 2, Part 3. Here we are. We're wrapping up this beautiful chapter. Yep. And it really is stunning. It, it is. This might be my favorite part, potentially, of Chapter yeah, 2. Yeah. So many beautiful points of meditation, mm-hmm. so many places to lean into. Mm-hmm. And again, before we wrap it up, I am like, as you're saying, like one of your favorites, it's like, there's just a lot of gratitude in my heart. Yeah. Like I, and I found myself today and this is actually a really good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, beginning of your day, end of your day, whenever, mm-hmm. just like, what are you grateful for? I'm mm-hmm. um, pulling out those rosary beads and doing like a rosary of gratitude. That's but best. like, right. Yeah. Today I was like, whoa, I am so grateful. Like, you know, that cliche saying like every cloud has a silver lining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It- <laughs> a little cliche but actually like i was leaning into that and i was saying you know what the blessing of community life yeah. and that when you lean into the battle you know when you take up <laughs> take up arms next to your good mm-hmm. sister whether you're like trying to tackle 250 pounds of chicken that you've got to <laughs> cut up for like you know your sister's profession or right or you know any of the other fun uh things we tackle as mm-hmm. sisters in community it's like it really does. Mm-hmm. Like the fight is easier. The The battle is less bitter. Yeah. You know, I, I'm able to be moving outside of myself and not get stuck inside because I'm, I'm living for the person next to me. And there's a person next to me who's cheering me on when I'm like, you know, having my moment. <laughs> right. And it really builds communio. It builds mm-hmm. bonds, you mm-hmm. know. It actually makes me think of um, our experience back in the day with the flood oh which one i know <laughs> be more specific the one it was this flood we had um i had never heard of it before an uncloggable clog in the drain mm. so the whole basement flooded in this convent like a remember, flash like a flash it was and like a matter of seconds it, and it was like pouring into our basement yeah and well what <laughs> strikes me about that was we had if you remember this huge rug in the basement it was floor. Like, amazing because it was a brand new donation yeah someone gave us this like you know grass hemp yeah rug which yeah. was a perfect yeah fit awesomely for such the floor. a gift beautiful yeah, yeah. but the when f- water hits the plants what happens bad things <laughs> do you come i mean it was like do you composing like major mold major mold instant well here's the thing too is like it took like five guys or ten guys to like take it down because it was so big when we first got it yeah then it got soaked and so we had to roll it up and it's so heavy so heavy and we couldn't lift it out and so it just sat there it was a nightmare molding it was an absolute nightmare and this is a case where we had to call more friends yes because we couldn't do this ourselves right we called you know the firemen it's the best. I actually remember calling myself and I said, you know, would you like to help us with a community service project? <laughs> <laughs> they were very good. They came right away. It's amazing. In the yeah. truck with their chainsaws. With the lights on. And they took it piece by piece and hauled it out of the window. Yeah. It was awesome, sister. It so was. So victorious. It was. I made sure we sprayed it with Lysol before they touched it. They <laughs> thought I was nuts. Anyway. What a kindness. It was so kind. But even, sister, like, thinking about, I mean, yeah, right? Like, yeah. the victory of that, the blessing of that, even yeah. though, like, it seemed like an insurmountable problem. Yeah. And and here it is. Life is filled with this stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I think about you and I and and living you know, over a decade in community life mm-hmm. together. And, you know, the fun battles that we've fought, <laughs> yeah. whether it's like when the freezer chest broke and I've got to help you haul hundreds of pounds of meat <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to another location stat. Right. Or like, yeah, you know, living in New York City, there are different challenges. Yeah, And we, we for a short time, had a bit of a battle with some large rodents. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And I'm grateful that you were there beside me, sister. I, you fared much better than I did. <laughs> Here we are running around our, our d- dining room with broomsticks. And, <laughs> and I was screaming a lot more than I was doing <laughs> anything effective to get that guy out of there. Yeah, we were really trying. It was, it was, it was definitely a no, moment. I saw a courage in you that I'd never seen. <laughs> Thank it you, was sister. inspiring. I, I pray for that grace. <laughs> 
okay. you have <laughs> for it. next time <laughs> you have it. it was so funny yeah i mean that or even like the most recent flood right that was special that was another really special flood again yeah. the drain the drain flooded and all of a sudden we've got inches of water in our basement well that moment of opening the door oh and it was gosh. like this there's a river coming in you're like oh <gasps> seriously and then it is you know what was amazing sister and it was so powerful it's like no one said a word mm -hmm. it's literally we're all supposed to be going to bed mm -hmm. it's 10 30 p.m at night yeah uh we're all tired as anything yep. and yet we not a word is spoken everyone's thrown off their socks and shoes we're wading into the water yeah we've got the worst equipment ever we've got push brooms yep. and like one power vac that wet vac thing that doesn't even work yeah and you have some sort of sponge. I had two sponges. <laughs> if I was a superhero, I'd be sponge woman. <laughs> Sponging up things. Oh my gosh. It was very effective. And it, we fought. We did. And with together. laughter, with joy. That's what I love. Encouragement. Loved. Like the push room, it should have been a new Olympic sport. Like one sister pushing water down the hall to another sister positioned to push it down another <laughs> section of the hall to another sister push it, positioned to push it out the door. Yeah. And, and actually, you know, it was like an hour plus of like... Mm -hmm yeah go 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 but there we were barefooted in the kitchen afterwards having popsicles at one in the morning <laughs> and rejoicing in the victory that we won together it really was it was this communio this victory in communio amen well and here it is sister gratitude is mm -hmm. so important mm -hmm. and especially as we dive into this gospel and especially in the section that we're going to hit uh, numbers 48 49 50 and 51 it is a particularly poignant, deep, mm -hmm. awesome place to rest, to mm -hmm. pray, and to ponder. And so I think this episode really is, um, I think we both desire to really draw others in to actually taking a moment for contemplative rest yeah. in the heart of the gospel of life. Yeah, we we really want to pray with you, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and meditate together the Lord yeah. in, this, in this particular episode. So do you want to start with a prayer? I would love to. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for the gift of your life and your love, for drawing us to yourself, for redeeming us through your cross and resurrection. And we ask, Lord, that as we contemplate you um, at this time, that you unleash in our hearts new graces of, of life and of understanding um, the gift you have called us to. We entrust ourselves to you and to our Blessed Mother, uh, as we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Mother of Life, pray for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, I love, I love looking at this, sister, and yeah, number 48, just starting it off. It's really, really beautiful. Basically, this whole section, in a way, is talking about how the Lord's commandment is offered as the path of life. Amen. And he gives us the road for our hearts to follow, for flourishing, for wholeness, and for, it's really, like, for integration. Amen, sister. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. It's like this reality, you know, we have this command um, that we find in the Old Testament, um, but it draws us into this deep call to be for something. Mm -hmm. In a sense, life is indelibly marked with a truth of its own. Mm -hmm. And this is true. When mm -hmm. you step back and when you rest in it, you realize this. And that we don't want to turn away from mm -hmm. this the challenge of this truth, mm -hmm. of this good, of this beautiful gift of life and God's commands to reverence it. Mm -hmm. And that actually serving a culture of life uh, is so much more about building, creating, fostering, yeah. flourishing the good. And that there's a lot at stake mm -hmm. is what this document holds. You know, not just the land of Canaan, right? Uh, the existence of the people of Israel. But as we stand, the world of today, mm -hmm. um, the future, uh, the existence of all humanity. And when we're open to mm -hmm. the fullness of this truth about God, man flourishes. Humanity yeah flourishes that being said we know this gospel's hard yeah it's, it challenges us it's not easy every level and layer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's demanding it really is it, it actually invites us to this integration and this living fully like body mind and soul uh, in the lord and for the lord which which can be hard right there's a lot of mm -hmm. different pressures in our lives um, in our own hearts 
our experiences that that might try to pull us away from that Mm -hmm. that life um, and that love um, and it's like, but we actually, we need it. Like we can't live detached from our ultimate source mm-hmm. who is God. There we is. need that deep um, connection, that integration. You know, it's like, why does he use mm-hmm. the analogy of the vine and the branches? Because it's just deeply true. There it is. You know, we need his life flowing through us. Well, and there it is, sister. You're you're kind of pushing into that. Yes, this is a challenging, demanding mm-hmm. gospel, the gospel of life. And yet, as we lean into it, God has given us a promise, Mm -hmm. and that is himself, Mm -hmm. that he will give us a new heart, Mm -hmm. a new heart in which there's a hope. There is this awareness of this principle of life that God has Mm -hmm. inscribed, and that we are able to appreciate and achieve the deepest and most authentic meaning of life. Mm -hmm. You know, that of being a gift, which is fully realized in the giving of self basically in imitating Jesus Christ himself. Isn't that awesome, sister? So vine and the branches, we have to look to Mm -hmm. and rest in the Mm -hmm. source of life and allow our hearts to be transformed by Jesus. It's so true. I mean, that's the answer. He is the answer to everything, every cry of our hearts. There it is. You know, and as it speaks about in 49, which I've always been struck by this passage, but where Jeremiah says, my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And when I read this, I actually, like, I feel the Lord's, like, ache and yearning for us Mm. to be filled, right? What is, like, what he's, he's so concerned for us that we have drink to quench our thirst. And it's like his heart aches that we have, you know, what actually is going to fill us and feed our hearts. Um, And as you're saying, it's like that new heart the Lord promises us, um, is is realized in Christ Amen. and in giving ourselves to him and to others as he does, you know, in his image. Um, and it's really powerful. And you see this in the lives of like people in our lives. Like I'm thinking of all our amazing coworkers and friends. Oh my gosh, amazing, my who, heroes. Like truly, like I've never met such generosity in my life. Literally pouring themselves out, bringing Amen. us like flowers at like 9 p.m., you know, <laughs> for our chapel. For our lady. Right, or like, Paint, helping paint a room and like taking a day off work to do. I mean, it's outrageous, outrageous, the generosity, but what an image of exactly what this is talking about. Amen, sister. Well, and here it is. It's like, that's the promise. That's the dare is that he's gone before us. Mm-hmm. He's paving the way. He's with us on the road mm-hmm. and he is enough. Mm-hmm. And again, here we are, sister. I actually, this brings us into paragraphs 50 and 51. Mm-hmm. And actually they're absolutely stunning mm-hmm. paragraphs. And I actually think we should just read them and really invite everyone listening to just sit back in your interior spiritual recliner Mm -hmm. and receive these words. Allow the Holy Spirit to be with you as you listen to us, read to you, um, and take a moment to pause and contemplate as John Paul II Mm -hmm. encourages us. Really the heart of the gospel of life, why we can have invincible hope Mm -hmm. and why we can dare Mm -hmm. in living in this gospel and giving the gift of our very selves unsparingly as Christ did. That's awesome. Amen. Sister, do you want to start with paragraph 50? I would love to. And then maybe I'll, I'll continue with 51. Perfect. And I'll read the little segment right before 50 because the sounds great. It's the little intro. They shall look on him whom they have pierced. The gospel of life is brought to fulfillment on the tree of the cross. At the end of this chapter in which we have reflected on the Christian message about life I would like to pause with each one of you to contemplate the one who was pierced and who draws all people to himself. Looking at the spectacle of the cross, we shall discover in this glorious tree the fulfillment and the complete revelation of the whole gospel of life. In the early afternoon of Good Friday, there was darkness over the whole land while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. This is the symbol of a great cosmic disturbance and a massive conflict between the forces of good and the forces of evil, between life and death. Today, we too find ourselves in the midst of a dramatic conflict between the culture of death and the culture of life. But the glory of the cross is not overcome by this darkness. Rather, it shines forth ever more radiantly and brightly and is revealed as the center meaning and goal of all history and of every human life. Jesus is nailed to the cross 
and is lifted up from the earth. He experiences the moment of his greatest powerlessness, and his life seems completely delivered to the derision of his adversaries and into the hands of his executioners. He is mocked, jeered at, insulted. And yet, precisely amid all this, having seen him breathe his last, the Roman centurion exclaims, Truly, this man was the Son of God. It is thus at the moment of his greatest weakness that the Son of God is revealed for who he is. On the cross, his glory is made manifest. By his death, Jesus sheds light on the meaning of the life and death of every human being. Before he dies, Jesus prays to the Father, asking forgiveness for his persecutors, and to the criminal who asks him to remember him in his kingdom, he replies, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. After his death, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. The salvation wrought by Jesus is the bestowal of life and resurrection. Throughout his earthly life, Jesus had indeed bestowed salvation by healing and doing good to all. But his miracles, healing, and even his raising of the dead were signs of another salvation, a salvation which consists in the forgiveness of sins, that is, in setting man free from his greatest sickness and in raising him to the very life of God. On the cross, the miracle of the serpent lifted up by Moses in the desert is renewed and brought to full and definitive perfection. Today, too, by looking upon the one who was pierced, Every person whose life is threatened encounters the sure hope of finding freedom and redemption. But there is yet another particular event which moves me deeply when I consider it. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Afterwards, the Roman soldier pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. Everything has now reached its complete fulfillment. The giving up of the Spirit describes Jesus' death, a death like that of every other human being. But it also seems to allude to the gift of the Spirit by which Jesus ransoms us from death and opens before us a new life. It is the very life of God which is now shared with man. It is the life which through the sacraments of the Church symbolized by the blood and water flowing from Christ's side, is continually given to God's children, making them the people of the new covenant. From the cross, the source of life, the people of life is born and increases. The contemplation of the cross thus brings us to the very heart of all that has taken place. Jesus, who upon entering into the world said, I have come, O God, to do your will, made himself obedient to the Father in everything, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, giving himself completely for them. He who had come not to be served but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, attains on the cross the heights of love. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And he died for us while we were yet sinners. In this way, Jesus proclaims that life finds its center, its meaning, and its fulfillment when it is given up. At this point, our meditation becomes praise and thanksgiving, and at the same time urges us to imitate Christ and follow in his footsteps. We too are called to give our lives for our brothers and sisters, and thus to realize in the fullness of truth the meaning and destiny of our existence. We shall be able to do this because you, O Lord, have given us the example and have bestowed on us the power of your Spirit. We shall be able to do this if every day, with you and like you, we are obedient to the Father and do his will. Grant, therefore, that we may listen with open and generous hearts, to every word which proceeds from the mouth of God. 
Thus we shall learn not only to obey the commandment not to kill human life, but also to revere life, to love it, and to foster it. Amen. Amen. Wow. Really beautiful paragraphs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really a prayer. I mean, as I was reading, as you were reading, you kind of, you can feel it like wash over you. Mm-hmm. Um, and his, it's like, it, it, you feel his presence in it, actually. Yes. It, it's so profound. And it speaks so deeply into, yeah, the cry of each of our hearts for an answer and for infinite love. And that the answer has been given mm-hmm. in Jesus Christ. And that's why, yeah, sister, we live in invincible hope. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Like hope flows from this passage. Mm-hmm. And it seems strange that it does because mm-hmm. we're reading a passage about a God who has died, mm-hmm. a God who was seemingly a failure, mm-hmm. a God who was there powerless. Mm-hmm. And it was right there, precisely there, that he won for us this incredible victory. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, this is where the gospel of life is brought to fulfillment, as you were saying, you know, on the tree of the cross. And that in this tree, we find the complete revelation mm-hmm. of the whole gospel of life. Uh, it's so powerful to think about this. And I think too, sister, it's like we can read about it and we can ponder it and we can pray Mm -hmm. But it's also thinking about how have I experienced this reality in my life? Mm -hmm. You know, those experiences where you're like, wow, why was there beauty in Mm -hmm. that pain? Mm -hmm. Why was there new life as Mm -hmm. I passed through that suffering? Mm -hmm. You know, why was that breakdown in relationship actually a breakthrough Mm -hmm. into the new that we both needed to embrace? Mm -hmm. Um, this is where we can find an answer. Mm-hmm. It's because Jesus is with us. Mm-hmm. Jesus is in it. Um, that we can go to the cross. And as this says, oh my gosh, there's this life pouring out from the pure side of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. that I can receive and let go to work in my life. Mm-hmm. And it's like this great paradox, you know, that the mm-hmm. Lord it talks about from the cross, the source of life, the people of life is born and increases, right? And the church talks about this, how we are, in a way, the, the church is born from the side of Christ. I was really struck, someone was sharing recently how she works in labor and delivery, and the woman, um, who anyone who goes for a C-section, is laid cruciform, right? And the, the wow. child is taken from her side, essentially. But in a way, it's like, this is an image of Christ wow. on the cross, right? Um giving giving us life making sense of our suffering that we can yeah come to him and it's an amazing thing actually and i i was thinking in my own life but and there's many i mean we all experience different sufferings Mm -hmm. um mental physical you know spiritual emotional different different layers but actually um leaning into it to Mm -hmm. find his presence there Mm -hmm. um and in a way like there's he's present almost in a unique way as he uniquely was present on the cross um and we can actually lean into those places and discover that yes he is he is not only there with us he's not only emmanuel but he's actually lifting us um toward the resurrection lifting us out and wanting to transform that experience of suffering because honestly let's be honest um, suffering in itself is meaningless, right? It's mm-hmm. an absurdity. Mm-hmm. But Christ takes what would others be meaningless and an absurdity and actually um, uses it for redemption mm-hmm. of the world, mm-hmm. for this unbelievable flourishing. Wow. It's so powerful. It's so powerful, sister. And I think this is the privilege that we have to see every day um, mm-hmm. in, in the lives that we're privileged to serve and the women that we're blessed to walk with mm-hmm. and what do we see? You know, we see that women who are seeking healing after abortion, they find new life. Mm-hmm. They find healing. Mm-hmm. They find peace. They find reconciliation. Mm-hmm. What's that about? Right. Or the women that come to us in crisis saying mm-hmm. there's no way that this new life is going to work. There's mm-hmm. no way. I don't have the resources mm-hmm. interiorly, exteriorly, mm-hmm. um, and a thousand other things going on mm-hmm. that make the, the life of this child impossible. Mm-hmm. And yet, as we walk with her Mm -hmm. and reflect back to her, her strength, her goodness, Mm -hmm. her dignity. She begins to perceive that Mm -hmm. dignity Mm -hmm. of the child, the life that she's carrying. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, 
you're at the first birthday of the child mm -hmm. and she has the biggest smile on her face mm -hmm. and she looks at you and she says, I never knew I could be so strong. Isn't that awesome? Thanks, sister. Wow. Like, thank you, God, mm -hmm. that I, that hope, Mm -hmm. I found hope mm -hmm. in the midst of that s circumstance and I reached out for it. Um, the young people that we're blessed to walk with mm -hmm. who there's a lot, it's just so tough, man. It, life is so confusing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of confusion. Yeah. And as they go and dare to look at the face of the father, looking back at them mm -hmm. and they dare to move past the fears, mm -hmm. the terrible fears that are plaguing mm -hmm. so many minds and hearts today and saying, no, I actually don't have to live like that. Yeah. I can live in the promise of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. I can live in the gaze of the Father mm -hmm. and know that I'm going to find someone with me yeah. and I'm going to find love, yeah. that infinite love that I'm thirsting for. And we see that all the time. Yeah. They come into themselves. Yeah. I could talk about my own life, right? Mm -hmm. I remember being in high school and mm -hmm. like my whole life, was sports. My mm -hmm. whole identity was wrapped around mm -hmm. um, my mile time, right? right. <laughs> and and praise be to God, the Lord threw me the cross. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was the first time when it was like, mm -hmm. I was really challenged to live my faith, mm -hmm. to dare in my faith, to say, okay, Lord, what do you want to do here? Mm -hmm. you, I feel like you're wrecking my entire life. Yeah. And yet, yeah, I had to pass through a number of injured seasons, disappointments, mm -hmm. but what happened? Mm -hmm. I discovered more deeply who I was. I was more than a mile time. I was a beloved daughter of the father. Mm -hmm. And I actually, it pushed me into this new depth mm -hmm. of love and relationship mm -hmm. and meeting and freedom yeah. that I was, I was way more, I was selling myself super short. Yeah. Um, there's so much more to me. And again, it's so easy to get, mm -hmm. we get caught up in the mm -hmm. little and big things every single day. But thinking about this in our life, has God ever really given you a reason not to trust him? It's true. It's true. And how everything is, and it sounds a little like radical, but actually everything is for you. Mm -hmm. Everything is for you. It can be. It can be. And But he wants to use it for your good if Amen. we allow him. And this is part of like letting love. But we let love have his way in us, right? Um, and there's a great quote actually from a theologian, Father Guru Lagrange, who was a Dominican. And he actually went senile at the end of his life. And kind of was losing his mind. Mm. Um, and there's this amazing story where the Pope actually wanted to visit him and thank him for his contribution to theolo theological work. Um, but Father was not in a place to receive him. Mm. And so he found out later when he kind of came to his senses a little bit more, he found out that the Pope had come, but he, again, he wasn't able to visit because of the state that Father was in. Mm -hmm. And you know what he said? It was so moving. He said, ah, he said, better to be as God would have me be than as, as I would have myself to be. Wow. But it's like letting love, even when we don't understand, like, why mm -hmm. is this happening? Letting love be in charge. Amen. You know, and even like, there's a beautiful story, actually, one of our um, friends, um, her name is Linda Holler, and she um, she wrote a book about her husband, Kenny, mm -hmm. but it's called, My Name is Kenny, I Can't Talk. Hmm. And it's an incredibly beautiful story of basically they met. Um, Kenny was the life of the party, knew everybody like extrovert.com. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they met, fell in love, got married. And shortly after their marriage, he was diagnosed with um, like cancer of the throat mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. um, I, I forget exactly the particular kind of cancer. And basically, basically being able to lose the ability to speak. He couldn't eat very much. Life was very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, but she shares basically so beautifully about the power of love that grew and flourished um, through that time of suffering between them as a married couple mm -hmm. with their sons. Um, and then she actually, the book she wrote is 200 people sharing their testimonies of how Kenny affected their lives. Wow. This is, and he would, he basically would write on a little pad. He couldn't talk. My name is Kenny. I can't talk. And he would talk to people through writing and people's lives literally were transformed by this man. Amazing. And it's like, even when, yeah, it's like, why, why is, why is the Lord allowing this? But the amazingness that he brought from it, the fruitfulness of the cross and not to make light of suffering, but to actually, because mm -hmm. we never want to do that. It's, it's sacred. It's painful. Like, and, and the Lord knows that he suffers with us. But the resurrection that he brings forth from it is incredible. And this story, it's so moving. It's actually um, in one of our imprint magazines, if you want to read it it's in full. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a really awesome, sister. Mm -hmm. But no, and I think this is the big dare, sister. And it's, it's really something to take into the heart 
and to take deep into the heart and to take to prayer mm -hmm. uh, and to really ponder. And I would say, before we go, mm -hmm. that would be my challenge is mm -hmm. to sit down with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and walk through your life with him. And particularly noting the crosses, noting the sufferings mm -hmm. and asking for the grace to see how God was present to you there, mm -hmm. see how God was loving you there, mm -hmm. uh, to see what God did in and through those crosses. Mm -hmm. And because what it can do is it strengthens our faith. Mm -hmm. And what we realize is like even, you know, the diminishments of suffering mm -hmm. and all the shades and colors that it can come, oftentimes the Lord is trying to give us something more mm -hmm. and that he's not diminishing us actually mm -hmm. he's opening us up to receive more of him mm -hmm. more of his life mm -hmm. to be conformed deeper into his own image mm -hmm. so that we can love mm -hmm. and give of ourselves just like him right that's what he does that's what he does and, and it's amazing it's amazing like he gives it's amazing he'll share his life with you it's amazing and he wants to give it to you forever mm -hmm. like you think of the good thief on the cross his whole life, I mean, he was a criminal, whatever had got him on the cross, you know, whatever things he did. But he was like the first canonized saint. I mean, Amen. it's a, the Lord wants to give us everything. Amen, sister. Yeah. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Before we go, sister, what do you have? You know, I would, I would just encourage you to, um, to be with Mary at the foot of the cross and maybe just pray the, the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. Beautiful. Um, and just stand with Mary and look at Jesus and look at him looking at you, loving you. Mm. Um, because that's really what it's about. Amen, sister. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. So that's my challenge. Should we close with a prayer? Sounds great, sister. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Jesus, you are the Lord of life. We ask for every grace of courage to seek that, to open our hearts to that, precisely in the places where we experience the cross suffering, darkness, difficulty, trial the most. We ask for every grace to lean in with full faith and confidence in you and in the power of your resurrection. We entrust to you our hearts. We turn over to you all the burdens that we carry. And we ask you simply to come, Jesus, and transform us. Transform us in and through your love. Transform us uh, into yourself. And we thank you ahead of time, Father, as we say glory be to the Father, to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. God bless all of you. We're praying for you. See you next time. See you next time. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.